Hello, my name is Dr. Kevin Kaplan. I'm an orthopedic sports medicine specialist at the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute and the head team physician for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'm here to discuss rotator cuff tears in the anatomy of the shoulder. We all hear patients that say they have rotator cuff tears or tendon tears in the shoulder. Uh, and uh, I'm here to define the anatomy a little bit and just to let you know how we treat these types of injuries. Uh, so the shoulder is made up of two bones, the humerus bone, uh, which meets, which is the ball, which meets up with the scapula or the glenoid, which is the socket. around the shoulder joint and what allows us to perform all the different ranges of motion uh, during our normal activities of daily living are these tendons which are called the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff muscles and tendons start from the shoulder blade and they run over the ball and then attach to the ball and when they fire they allow the shoulder to go up, to go out and to go in. And during your lifetime, you do a lot of repetitive activities. Even if you're not into sports, you certainly lifting your arm up and down over time, and that can cause injuries to these tendons. And sometimes you can tear the tendon completely, which is called a full thickness tear of the rotator cuff. And sometimes you can tear just a part of the rotator cuff, which is called a partial, partial thickness tear. Uh, and these are treated differently. Conservative management for rotator cuff injuries or partial tears where people are still functioning uh, and are not having significant weakness uh, include strengthening the other rotator cuff muscles and the other muscles around the shoulder joint uh, to help compensate for the fact that you're having difficulty and, and to hopefully allow that partial tear to heal. You can also try different types of injections. Corticosteroids are anti-inflammatories and we don't typically recommend continued injections of corticosteroids, but one injection with a corticosteroid can help to decrease inflammation from a partial or full thickness rotator cuff tear. Uh, there are new types of ther therapies, including platelet-rich plasma or orthobiologics, which we're trying as orthopedic surgeons to try and get a partial rotator cuff to heal. Now, if you have a full thickness tear uh, or a partial tear that is causing significant disability, weakness, difficulty sleeping, then we recommend surgical intervention. And that is what's called an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair. Uh, and we do this through small incisions with a camera and we use these absorbable anchors uh, and these uh, look like little screws that we put into the bone and they have stitches attached. And, and we pass those stitches uh, through the rotator cuff uh, so this is a partial tear of the rotator cuff and we pass those stitches through the tendon and use those stitches to then tie the tendon down to the bone. Uh, and that allows the tendon to grow back into the bone and then you have a series of physical therapy type exercises uh, while you get your motion and allow that tendon to heal. The typical recovery for a rotator cuff can be anywhere between four to six months. Uh, because biologically it takes about three months for that tendon to heal into the bone. During that period of time you have a physical therapist working with you to get your range of motion back and also get your strength back while you get back to your normal activity.